Hello everyone, it's PD696 here, and I'm going to teach you another thing in programming. Uh, today we'll learn if-then statements and how to use them in counters. I might have already shown you a bit about the if-then statements and counters, but this will kind of finish it up and sum it up total. Um, I deleted... Oh, I didn't. It didn't save. My computer is freaking out. I'm going to delete our program that we've been using before. If you haven't watched my other videos, um, if I say they're my other videos, it most likely is, or I completely forgot, and please leave in the comments that I did forget that it wasn't in my other videos. Um, so I'm going to delete this program, which I went to second memory, or plus, it says mem, uh, go down to two, which is mem, all, which is the first one, and aaa, hit delete, are you sure? Number two, yes. So that just deletes it, so uh, you have to make sure your, your RAM, which is your random access memory, does not fill up all the way, or you can't do anything. Like, if I would make so many programs that this would be zero, because each one takes a bit, then I couldn't make any more programs, and I could barely run any, and my calculator would freak out. So you have to make sure that you keep that clear. If it is full, you can archive things by just hitting enter on them. It puts a little star, or we're going down like the catalog and archiving them. Uh, we can do that in another one. I can show you that, but I won't show you it now. Um, so here, I'm going to make a new program, if I can hit the right buttons, for... I'll just name it A, B, C. Now, I'll do a quick few things. So, label A, I insert zero, wrong place, sorry. Uh, zero store A, label A, display A, and a plus one store A. Now those are all things we've done before. In my other videos, labels was the last one, displays was the first one. Uh, in labels I showed you the A plus one store A. So that's the basics of a starting counter. And zero store one, I put it above this so that when it goes back to the label it doesn't store zero in that over and over again so it actually can do something. So now if then statement. So program, if is the first one, then is the second one, and else is also used here the third one. I probably won't use else in this program. Else is if you have like a bunch, like two things, and then there's a bunch more options, but it's not just like a greater than zero, less than zero. It's like anything else. That's why it's an else statement, I guess. Um, anything else, you use the else, but besides that, I won't get into that today. That'll be in a bit farther down one where I get more in depth with one of these. So, A plus one store A. If a equals logic statements uh, is second math, which is test. Down there, you have test and logic, which is end or not. I probably won't use the end or. I might later in the video. But if A equals 5, not you, 5, go to B. So this doesn't need a then statement because it's only one line. The next one, if a does not equal 5, we will um, put a then in. Then means it's like we're keeping an if-then statement going. So it's like if this whole thing happens, then it's not just one section. So if that, then we'll display A. And you can have as many here, so I'll just display it again. And then go to A. So, and then after, if you have a then statement, you have to have an end, which is the seventh down here. Seventh end, and then it'll stop the then statement. It's kind of like a section from here to here. This is all what happens. I don't know a better way to explain it. It's like a little group. Like, it's then what happens in here, all the parentheses, whatever's going on, that's what's happening in your if statement. So, that's like basically if then using, and then that's counting every time it goes to A, because it'll add another one. So we'll make a label B, then 0 store A, display random word, just to make sure that it's going to the right spot. We'll display B, and then go to A. Now, so this program should go all the way down using the if-then statements, should add 1 to A every time, display A, add 1, 
Um, if A is equal to 5, it goes to B. If it's not equal to 5, it goes back to A. Add another one until it's equal to 5. If it's equal to 5, it'll go to B. On B, it'll set A back to 0, display B, and then start the process over. So it'll technically be an endless loop. So that's really, really fast. You can see it's running extremely well, I guess. But you can kind of see it's going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not showing the 5 because once it's equal to 5, it won't display it. If you want it to display, you put it as part of the then statement. If A equals 5, dis display A. If A does not equal 5, display A. But then it'll be afterwards, so you will get to see the 5. Right now, it's just showing the 4s. And it's showing the 4 twice because... Uh, let me break the program. Break. There we go. Which is the on button, if you don't remember. Go to... That's because I put the extra display A right here. If you just wanted it to display 5, um, you'd have to set this actually to be 6, is what I meant to say, not 5. Uh, set it to be 6, so then when it is equal to 6 to display the 5, or there's other ways, like you could put it in a separate area, like if A is not equal 5, go to C, display that. Um, or put it right after the A plus 1 stores A. So, like, if I would put it right there instead. Boop, boop, boop. Now it'll show all 5 because the counter is already finished. But now it won't show the 0, so it'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B, outside. So that's basically ways to use if-then statements. So if then is really useful for like if you want something to happen, it's not working on 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 on. There we go. Sorry. Um. Oh gosh. If you want it to happen over and over again, like something, or happen a certain amount of times, uh, you can go there. Like my one game that I've made, you pass out if you go past a certain spot over and over again. And so if that has a counter on it that will count how many times you go past it. If it's equal to, I think, 15 is what I used, then you'll go to a second label, which will have you pass out. So that's kind of how to use counters and labels. Um, here's how to archive it. I'll show you real fast. Just go back to where we were before and hit this. That's the quickest way to archive. You can see the archive memory and the RAM memory changing. And that's about the easiest way to change that. And I was going to show you else statements too, but I actually lost half of the footage from here on and so I had to record this afterwards I lost the else footage I will show that in either the next video or one later you really don't need it at the moment um but I'll put it on one of these videos to make sure that you get it and that was my calculator closing outside um and otherwise that's the end of my video for this one thanks for watching sorry for the abrupt ending and bye